Welcome everyone, this is Pineleaf Needles, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro, and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us, Terry Adwin! Hi hi! Erendis! Hey everybody! And Sanswinda! Hello! Hello there, and uh, this week we have had a little bull roar preview where we had the first little look at what's coming up soon, and that's because update 24.3 is has the Stout Axe Dwarf in there for the new race for the Stout Axe Dwarf, which is going to be part of the package for the upcoming Minas Morgul update. And in here, the news and notes are, first of all, the, of course, the new race, the Stout Axe Dwarf, is available for preview, meet the civil, lost civilization of Stout Axe Dwarves, and live their story of reemergence. And on the 11th's emote, now works more consistently. The food items will disappear if the emote is interrupted. I had never noticed that there was a problem with it. Sounds like a good fix. Mm. Right. As for items, some stats have been updated on Isengard gear to to be more in line with modern values. I know that some of the items that I was getting as rewards were consistently downgrades from what I was already using from the previous zone, and I did not do in-game content in the previous zone, so... Hmm. And also, a new big bumblebee cosmetic pet has been added to the game and is available for gold marks at the Vales of Anduin. So if you, so can't... now there can be three giant bumblebees to chase little hobbitses around. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. All right. So what? There's also a store b- bee. Um, I don't know if it's a store bee or if it's just a cosmetic bee from one of the cosmetic vendors. Oh, okay, the, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It could be from a... So, yes, you have that one. You have the one for doing all the content. And then you have the Bumblebee now, which you can get from Gold Marks in the Vales of Anduin. And a new pig cosmetic pet has been added to the game and is available also at the Vales for elf tokens. As for monsters, they fixed the location issue with the stone giants in the Vales of Vondwing in Gladimir. I'm not too sure what the location issue is, but I think that there were some places in the south side where you could be seen by the giants. And of course, the giants are all in the north side, so I guess that could create some issues if that's okay. the case. And the Monster Play character selection screen has been updated with a more modern look. Did you forget that High Elves now drop Elf Ears Pine? Well, I'm sure that the High Elves don't want to be known for being able to drop those things. (laughs) Yes, but all the monsters need to know that their noms are now available. (laughs) For now, it's available now. Hear ye, hear ye, to all ye monsters listening to our podcast. It is now I worth chomping on high elves for elf ears as well as other things. I'm sure that they're going to consider high elf ears to be an especial delicacy. Probably. That's right. They've, they've been aged. They've been, yes. they've been <laughs> aged like a fine wine. <laughs> and for quests and adventure areas, correct an issue that would cause travel vendors' mounts to lose their established travel routes. That sounds like a good issue to correct. And as for the UI, class selection of the character creation screen now shows iconic class-specific armor appearances. The visual change is only for character generation. It does not affect the appearance of starting character armor. That means you have a better look when you're on the character selection screen. Oh, so it doesn't tell you that your character is going to show up in ugly armor. Got it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> right. And cap earning virtue alerts will no longer display on login when all virtues are capped, and clicking on the alert will open the virtue traits panel. 
And when a player joins after a quest or instance grouping request, a new alert will show with a, with a tooltip that shows the player is interested in grouping. Clicking on the alert will open either the group questing panel or the instance finder, depending on the group that was joined. Unlike other alerts, this alert will auto dismiss after 30 seconds. And as for miscellaneous, the Open AL Soft DLL has been updated. And those are the items that are in the first preview for Bullroar. I've guessed that there might be one or two additional previews that there will be before update 24.3 goes live. And I have a feeling that when 24.3 does go live, it'll probably be right about the same time that the pre-orders will be up for Minas Morgul because traditionally you're able to access the new race immediately upon doing the pre-order. And that's why the first thing they put out is the new race because that's what happened with the with the high elves, yeah. With the high elves, and it's also what happened in the last two expansions for DDO with the ra- with the items that they're being added there. I hope so, because I can hardly wait for my stout axe burglar to actually be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> the preview was fun. And uh, I-, I was going to ask about that, because we barely touched on it when we were kind of going through the list. Has anyone been able to mess around with the Stout Axe Dwarves at all, or what's kind of your impression? I made one and played it on Bull Roar, and it was fun. And I really liked what they did with the story and the starting instance. And I can hardly wait for more people to have done it so we can talk about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is that. We are trying to avoid spoilers at the moment. But soon after they post update 24.3 and we start to have access to the South Axis, I'm sure such scruples will die quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Once people have had an opportunity. But of course, most likely the Stout Axis will only be available to those who purchase or if when it early, pre-order the expansion. We'll see for sure when the time comes. Then let us head into the Lotro Beacon issue 129, where it looks like they are having a bit of a picnic. Whatever they're doing there, what are they doing there? It looks like they're gathering around listening to a storyteller. That is what it looks like. Yeah, maybe they maybe they're listening to a story about Pirate Day. Ooh, that could be. That's a possibility, or perhaps the story of what happened to Bilbo Baggins, since we have the Bilbo's birthday event going on right now. And there are lots of stories about that floating around. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> I was running around today, going through them all over again. Oh, is that up? Yeah. That is up. Yep. And here on the community spotlight, some um, Lethiani Freep's Kinship runs 108 PVMP raids, 108 PVMP raids a year on Arkansas every Friday and Sunday evening at 5:30 Eastern. Raids are open to all. Come join us for a 500 plus raid against the creatures of Mordor. Let's see, on Friday and Sunday. I guess they also run a couple extras in addition to that if they get up to 108. And the 14th Big Boar Market in Bree will be taking place on Belegir September 22nd at 1 p.m. Eastern Time at the Boar Fountain in Bree. And you can click for more information about the event. And that is actually tomorrow from when we are recording here. So if you're not listening to live, you've probably already missed it. 
Cosmetic Lotra has posted a new Shipwrecked Mariner's outfit. Yeah, there's three in this post. They're looking good, too. They're very awesome. They make me want to go make new Shipwrecked outfits. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but I was have a feeling that Fragel is not exactly the best place to have your ship wrecked. Well, no. Is there a good place oh. to have your ship wrecked, though, Pinely? <laughs> well, yeah, probably on a sunny beach somewhere. Well, yeah. I mean, I'd still prefer not to have the ship wrecked, though. I'd prefer it to just set me yeah. ashore. Yes, there is that. And someone was asking concerning the shipwrecked mariner how they got the ship through the you know, past the Brandywine Bridge, and that may be a clue on how the ship got wrecked. Attempting <laughs> <laughs> to go under the bridge. Whoops. We can do it, guys, we can do it. Yeah. yeah, we can make it just a little bit further still. Oh, yeah, keep throwing water out. We're making it. We're totally doing good. We got this. <laughs> we got this. Yes, yes, only a minor demasting that we had there. It's minor. Don't, don't pay attention to it. It's yes. The gleaming thread totally fine. Yes. That gleaming thread posted a new outfit called Watcher of the Veils. Which is also really cool and has one of my favorite tunics used. Oh yeah. I really like that circle of the yield. And a small piece of Lotro has posted some screenshots from Gondorian Rock Knight 2019. And you can watch Joe has rock inaugural concert over the weekend. Of course, obviously, that's probably happened by now. Oh, but oh, the, but there is a link to a YouTube. Ah, OK. It's a link to their first concert that was done last week. So it's a YouTube. A YouTube video, all right. That's then in the Ken House Hall, Peaky Blinders on Evernight is now recruiting players to join us in completing future and current endgame content and instances T2C slash T3 as well as pro progress as a kin. The aim is to provide a fun experience with a with as little error as possible when in full swing. They are currently looking for anyone of any class and gear quality to fill their ranks. PvP and P groups will be an option for those who are interested, but not compulsory for all members. Only requirements are to at least have access to Discord. We'll have all the raid times and where and where we'll make groups, etc. And to have a bare knowledge of your class. Send a tell to Paddington. Ishkador or Fladro Fladrune in game for more info. No, I don't think I'll ever get that one right. So that's on <laughs> Evernight. <laughs> oh, come on, fine. What? H C C H H C H I'm very impressed. <laughs> I can't. It's better than what I could have done. It's always entertaining <laughs> hearing Pine Leaf attempt it. <laughs> oh, well. Well done, Pine Leaf. I have a feeling who. Whoever the player is, Paddington most likely, is probably not going to have that opinion. <laughs> Let's head into our weekly comment. It's almost time to celebrate Bilbo and Frodo's birthday. What are you bringing to the party? Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be... I'd say birthday pie. <laughs> a big appetite? <laughs> oh, Ooh. I, 
yeah, that would be something to bring to that party. Because that's what you'll be needing. <laughs> A lot of people in the... Oh, sorry. I have a great deal of fireworks still in my inventory. I could bring fireworks. Yep, a lot of people in the forums agree with you, Pinely. What, fireworks? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So good thing I I said that before. (laughs) (laughs) Worked out just fine. Worked out fine. Anyone else have anything? Then let's head into the fan site news where Raid Ready with Roxy talks about the best in slot itemization for level 75 with various classes. And Winnie's Adventures continues on to Mirkwood. And you can click on the link to watch her stream. The Dwarf Scholar resumes his adventures in Rohan. Gravity 42 carries on in the Vales of Anduin. The Tolkien Professor leaves Harwick and heads towards Floodwind. Druid's Fire continues the Bingo Boffin quest. The Wayward Plane continues on the Legendary Server. And Valville levels up her Slowpoke character on Honor. And for our screenshot of the week, Fibro Jedi posted this week's screenshot and... That's one is, how do you get that shot properly? That's what I was wondering. Good grief. (laughs) Very carefully. (laughs) Very carefully, indeed. That's a great action shot. It is. Oh, yes. And a very tough one to get, I think. Especially with... Sorry. I said, I most likely crashed into something. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you're going to crash into something anyway, because it's on a war state. That is true. When you ride around on the suicide horse. And when you ride around on the suicide horse, not looking forward. Unless there was somebody else. Yes. That is, of course, it's another party who had UI turned off. But even then, that's a pretty risky thing to do. So, thank you, Fibro Jedi, for the shot. And that concludes our beacon for this week. So, let's head into our store sales. Before we get there, Pine Leaf, I just want to point out that even trying to get screenshots that seem completely safe can go terribly wrong in an instant. Especially with (laughs) things like moose around. So, um... (laughs) I think screenshots in general are just Not the same test personal experience of this or anything. (laughs) Well, Uh, there is that, but usually the moose only attack you if you're several levels below the level. Oh yeah, that that, that happened. Um, I mean, we were totally inside of town, though, and there were guards and everything, and they did nothing. Well, you know how Dale is. They're still a little jittery after after the war and all. <laughs> now let's head to our store sales in a sale that I have a feeling Terry Edwin's not going to like. No, it's a bunch of legendary garbage. Um, but the 10 key bundle is available in the Lotus store until September 29th. And then we've got 25% off now through September 26th. The legendary level cap up increase, legendary stat upgrade, relics packs, legacies, legendary slot unlock, and legacy tier upgrades, scroll up combination, and relic removal scroll. So if you've got a bunch of loader points and you really don't want to do those 42 days of Minas Tirith, you can do it now while they're on sale. (laughs) So check and uh, see if the mithril is still cheaper, because it might be. Coupon gets you a 20% mount speed, 90 minutes with coupon code mount speed now through September 26th. That's actually a pretty good one. Doesn't work on war steeds, but it's great for your regular horses, and it stacks with your journeyman riding, so it's like <laughs> zoomy horse. Oh, Whee! Wow. Zoom! Let's then head into our site news, where we have where in Middle Earth is Emerlina number 22. 
Now, last week's murder in the Lourdes and Rolina, it, it was at Bar Thorenion. So, I usually think of it as um, Thom Perianin. And, of course... It's the Hobbit Allegiance Hall. <laughs> yeah, essentially the Hobbit Allegiance <laughs> Hall, the the name they're giving that... Uh, oh, I've Rolina, never been there. I haven't either. Oh, you should totally go, Terry. The yeah, Hobbit uh, Allegiance is really funny. Yeah, I know. It's on my list. Okay. Just making sure it's still on your list. It, it is on my list. I'm still trying to finish up my Dwarf Allegiance. I'm almost done with it. But the, the whole Allegiance thing, you gotta do the daily quests in Mordor, and you know, you guys know how I feel about daily quests in general. That is true. Yeah. So. And they don't even give you black steel keys anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was like the only reason I was doing them. So, yeah. As for our new one, it, there is of course a another one where she is flexing in front of a waterfall, and of course the idea is figuring out where is this location. And there's snow, which is really perplexing because the water should be frozen. One might think Not so. Not necessarily, because there are plenty of times where you can have snow and the water won't necessarily be frozen. Yeah, it might not be quite cold enough to freeze the water. Yeah, it takes a lot in order to freeze a river. But anyway, that is where our new screenshot is. I have a pretty good idea where it's at, and so let's see, can you figure out where that is located? Then, let's head into Terry's pick for this week. So, we talked about one set of outfits by Cosmetic Lotro already, because it made the beacon. Um, this one actually dropped in my inbox this morning. This is Reed Fishing, also by Cosmetic Lotro, which is a really adorable um, hobbity outfit. But would also work for any woman character, like female human or female elf. Because that dress actually um, works great for taller races as well as the shorter ones. All right. So that is the reed fishing outfit. And of course, appropriately enough, she is fishing in the reeds, which is noticeable since very often the reeds in this game are taller than the hobbits. Yeah. Frequently. Frequently, yes. I have been lost in the reeds so many times in this game. Yeah. My hobbit usually can't <laughs> see over them. Yeah. Just wander around blind, hoping I can target something. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. A frequent tr problem that we have in this game. If you're a hobbit, at least. And sometimes, even if you're playing a taller race. Yeah, that's, that's when you know the reeds are really tall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had that happen, actually, and it's really disconcerting when it's not, when you're not on a hobbit and you get lost in the reeds. Then you just feel sympathy for all of your Hobbit friends. <laughs> <laughs> Let's then head into our new player question for this weekend. Arendis, what's the question? The question this week is, I believe, a quick one. Um, when we were talking through what's on sale this week, they mentioned legacies. What is a legacy exactly? A pain. <laughs> <laughs> the the legacies are the various uh, skills and things that are on your allies, and they can okay. be really helpful when they're leveled up. Yes, because they make the things that your character can do stronger, or last longer, or it's just getting them leveled up can be painful. Yes. Now you are in the because you're in Merkwood right now, or where? Yep, I'm in Merkwood. All right, so you've had to have run into legacies at least on your allies. It's because when you first ID one, you have these three 
skill-like things that come up when you ID it. Yeah, they don't actually tell you that they're called legacies. Yeah, they don't tell you, but yeah, that's what they're called. Gotcha. I haven't done anything with my LIs in several, several levels, so all of this is very, very rusty, and, and it'll yeah. be interesting when I have to go back. When you look at your LI and you say, oh, wow, this is really a bit dated. <laughs> I tend to look oh, at yeah. it and be like, oh, I have so many points to spend. And then you can spend yeah. your points in your legacies until you imbue, and then you level them yeah. in other ways. Yeah, that's the big thing. Is when That's when they become a pain. Points, yeah. Yeah. It's those points that you, that you, the things that you spend your points on, those are your legacies. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. Then let's into our week in Lotro and Sans Window. What were you up to? So, um, I'm kind of cheating a little bit on the week in Lotro because I wasn't here last week. Um, but after, uh, the girls were, episode where I was silent two weeks ago. Sorry about that, everyone who listened. I did answer questions from chat, but apparently my mic wasn't actually going through, so I'm sorry. Um, but we decided to start working with the burglars again, and I was helping um, I was helping Gwerinda's level of burglar, and she was level 27, and I was level 37, and we're going through the Lone Lands, and we're both on burglars because I discovered quickly that bringing along an on-level hunter was not actually helpful to practicing burglar skills for the burglar <laughs> <laughs> because things didn't have a tendency to actually make it all the way to the burglar. Um, so I brought my higher level burglar cause then at least we both had to run up to everything and we're in the end of the forsaken and um, we get this quest about the noises in the basement and I was telling Verinda, is like, okay, we can just, like, if we take the quest and we accept it, we travel now, it'll go out of our quest log. And then, you know, when we get a good group together, we can go back and finish it if we want to, or we don't have to. Um, and we got in there and she's like, oh, this is fun. And so we, like, investigated the noise and uh, moved some things around to find secret passageways. And then we got to the... Uh, doors, the puzzle doors, and we had a lot of fun solving them, and I was like, okay, now we're going to get killed, and we'll be done. Well, we didn't just get killed and be done. We kept killing things, and um, we kept going, and I figured, you know, we'd be done well before the boss fight. We'd just give up and come back with a better group, because there are so many things that two burglars cannot do in that instance. Um, like, read which things you're supposed to do. So <laughs> we kept going. And suddenly we're like sliding down the water slide going, ooh, there's a boss fight now. And so we started it. And I had no idea what to do in the boss fight because I've only been on ranged characters. So I'm like, well, I stand up here and I shoot things. Um, so maybe you should stand up here and like throw a knife at them when they run past. Like, this is a great idea. Uh, it did not take very long to get completely pounded by the boss. So we modified the idea and tried again. Um, actually, to her credit, Gwerindus did not get pounded by the boss. She was standing where she was supposed to be, uh, setting off the traps randomly and uh, throwing knives. Um, I was the one who got pounded by the boss, and then it reset the instance when I went to see if I could get back into it. Which, of course, you can't, because boss fight. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so we, we strategized and came up with a new plan, and we did it. And it took forever, because burglars give, like, death by a thousand paper cuts, and he kept going immune. Um, and, but it worked. And I ran in circles till I was dizzy, and at one point, the giant, like, has his one foot in the air trying to stomp me, and he's, like, sliding along behind me, um, which was pretty epic. Um... And, yeah, we just we just ran him in circles until he was done. Um, and it was awesome. Totally an unexpected win for our two burglars. So, um, yeah. Uh, nice job, guys. I really want to go try it again on Tier 2 because I want the rest of the pages for that stupid journal. But I'm not sure two burglars is the right combination for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think we can get through some of the places anyway um, without the right classes but 
that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and the skating giant was pretty epic. Um, and so then we've been running um, other landscape stuff. So I think we're now level 39 and 35 or something. So we've done, we've done a good bit of leveling and growing since then. But uh, that was the epic moment. Um, and I took the uh, shirtless dwarves. Uh, closer to Bear Door with Cinders and um, Froring. No, not Froring. Um, Farrar. Uh, Kia Sources Dwarf. Um, and we had a photo shoot near the, like, the ruined tower that fell over. And we, we got on fire and we stood there looking calm, like, walking out of it like it was nothing. We were all almost dead. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we decided after healing back up that it'd be fun to go back and like try smoking while on fire. Uh, so there's a picture of that. Uh, there's a picture of that through the lens of uh, the first dwarf to die, uh, which is a kind of cool, like, I don't know, old fashioned sepia type tone to it. Um, and yeah, and then we had some like us walking, sauntering out of the, uh, the, uh, what would you call it? The smoke. Smoke kind of billowing behind us and us walking away like, oh, no big deal. Um, so that was fun. We totally ran into a cliffside wall doing that and uh, had to backtrack and we backtracked right into a dragon. You know, as you do. Fire as drink. you do. Um, and, you know, minor inconvenience, so kind of laughing with finally like dangerous photo taking. Yeah, we totally had a very dangerous photo shoot. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And we've got more things ready to turn back into the dwarves at the Spire of Lugash. And it was fun. And then on the field trip, um, <clears throat> convinced... <laughs> I still don't know how this happened. But I had two bad ideas. Um, and the first bad idea with my level 104 character who was standing in Udun, uh, looking longingly at the armor and stuff she can't use for another level. Um, I was like, you know, I've got two bad ideas. That sounds like a regular Sandswinda idea. You know, that was a regular Sandswinda idea, but I decided that was the worst idea. That was like the third bad idea was to continue in Udun. Um, I was like, we could like go roving threat hunting and I could get better allies. That would be a good thing to do. Or, you know, we could go to, like, Tarlang's Crown and work on some rep with the uh, <clears throat> folks around there and, uh, and uh, Dol Amroth, and I could get titles for my allies, and that would be a good thing to do. Uh, both would make me more effective in Mordor. And for some reason, Tyleaf decided that Tarlang's Crown sounded less dangerous than roving threat hunting. So we ventured into Tarlang's Crown. And it was epic. Um, we were on characters... Well, I was on a hunter, so I play a hunter pretty regularly. Uh, but the guys were on characters they don't play very often. We had a captain and a guardian. And my hunter, who is vastly undergeared because she jumped from level 1 or 5 to 95. So, um, yeah, we had a wipe on the first pull, but we didn't all die at the same time, so we were able to finish that. And then it was going really good, and then we had an accidental pull. And we were all kind of panicked, but we just kept shooting. I kept shooting. They kept swinging swords and whatever else they had equipped. And we did it. As though we were a well-oiled machine, and it was very satisfying. Um... I felt very accomplished walking out of Tarling's crown. Would have been a good moment to like photo shoot us like strolling casually out, like, oh yeah, we totally cleaned this off, but we didn't. We uh, got back to the campfire and were relieved and logged out. Oh, but, but it did actually. We didn't casually get out. We got on war. <laughs> we we kind out, of like, ran like, out. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had to go back and backtrack and walk and take pictures if we were going to do that, because we totally did not kill as we left. We just tried to outrun everything. I don't think we had any casualties on the way out, though. Did we, Pine? 
my mount, I believe. Your, your mount did day. go down, yes. <laughs> and you were pretty hurt when you got there, but they all turned around. Yeah. I Essentially, is the captain speed buff, which apparently works in combat, became very <laughs> useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely bravely ran away at the end of the field trip time. Uh-huh. But that was fun, and I got some good rep. So um, I'm getting closer to being a friend standing and able to actually port like I'm supposed to be able to port and have titles. So that was good. How was your week, Arundis? It was not nearly as eventful as yours. <laughs> I don't know how I can follow up on this. Um, no, I, I mostly just ran around Mirkwood and got lost with my champ. Um, it always makes me laugh how sometimes uh, the wargs and the birds in the forest are not as observant as sometimes you would think they would be, um, especially when you can, you know, pop off milestone skills or something right next to them. And they're just kind of like, oh, what's that over there? And you're going, I'm standing right beside you. This is what is happening. But anyway, so my, my week was pretty light. Pine Leaf, how was yours? I'm going to begin with the little bit on Bulbar, where I did do a little testing with the stout axes. And did yeah, you finish that... the whole intro? Yeah, I finished the entire intro. Nice. Yeah. There there was one little bit there where let's just say it was the toughest intro I ever remember having in Lotro. I was defeated. Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah it's, apparently it's, it's, I should have let them tank. I have a feeling that if you are planning the... If you're planning to get that undying title, probably the Stout Axis is not the best race to choose. So they might tone that down a little bit for the next build or something, because I think that boss fight was a wee bit on the tough what side. Class so it was playing? totally fitting. I was a burglar. Um, and I was no. What was I? What class was I in there? Well, and once you've made oh, that mistake hunter. once, though, it'll hunter. probably be better next time. Like I can't imagine I would make the same mistake again. Well, there is that. Now that I know what's going to happen. True. We'll just have to test it next week or the week after when they have the next build and yeah, I'll see if I can stay alive. Better. Then, on Honor, I helped the people of Galtrev to overthrow their half-orc overlords. Yay, stupid orcs. Yes. After which... Sorry, sucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but and I think I bid five. Well, I haven't gotten to that bit yet. <laughs> okay. But I did go to town with that address where I was helping those nice folk at the Falcon Clan. <clears throat> and, <laughs> as they put uh-huh. the rangers to work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those very nice folk that we ran into again the other day, huh? Yeah, yeah, that, those, those nice folk. Uh-huh. And then during the field trip... Since we had talked about Tar- Tarling's crown, of course, but I decided to call this because of the very beginning of what we did since we went to the housing neighborhood. In- yeah, we found in- that quest on our way out to Tarling's crown and decided to detour. Yeah, we detoured and did all the housing instance, the all the Gondorian housing instance quests, and therefore we played the Lotro shell game that we <laughs> Followed the dog shell all over the place, and then did the quests that were that we went by as we went along. And shell kept changing colors. Yes, there is that. Well, my shell stayed the same color all the way through because I never had to resummon shell. But apparently, every time you summon shell, shell comes out as a different color. And we all were seeing a different colors for each person's shell. So therefore, I was seeing Sans Windu with one color shell, but Sans Windu was seeing a different color, and Finn was seeing a third color. Huh. And we all had, and I saw, 
and so I'm seeing three different colors for each of our shells. <laughs> so it's like, and I'm just wondering because Sans had to keep on resummoning Shell. We we're wondering, does is she even going to recognize her dog when we return her at the end of the walk? <laughs> right, I kind of expected them to be like, and this is not the dog I sent you walking with. Well, it's a shell game. What do you expect? <laughs> And that's it for our week in Lotro. Then let's head into our news beyond Lotro, where oh, we have another poem by Darren Loremaster, where it looks like the Witch King of Angmar is talking about the fall of Honor and the overthrow of Angmar. And this just shows that the Witch King apparently has a different version of what happened at the Battle for Nolstan than I recall hearing. I guess the Witch King likes revising history, perhaps. The Witch King raged as his minions fought, but all went wrong that day. For his pre- previous victories counted not, with, which had been achieved just yesterday. Honor was destroyed, now their king was dead. He had slain the witch king's he was slain by the witch king's hand. Reinforcements from Gondor now fight in their stead, with their numbers like the grains of sand. Gondor had assembled and had sailed north with great force up the North Downs plain, and the riders Rovanian rode boldly forth to heap high the piles of dead orcs and slain. There between Ninuel and the North Downs fell all the mighty host of Angmar's witch king, slain by arrows from archers up from Rivendell, and the long sword blades of the Rovanian swing. All who followed the witch king lay dead on the field, every man's son did Gondor slay, and no quarter was asked, no quarter was given, so his black hordes perished in that in a day. Alone was the witch king, yet strong in his power, and the captains of Gondor he cursed, for he singled out Irnur for death in that hour with a malevolent hatred nursed. Dark as night was the witch king, coal black was his steed. As he charged out in Mordor's name, bearing down Irnur, who in that hour of need none could help. Fast the witch king came. Irnur never bla- never blenched, but his steed fled in fright. The witch king his destrier could not stand. The mock laughter of Angmar shrieked out through the night, like a fiend scenting prey close at hand. Then Glorfindel advanced like a bright levin blast as the witch king, the bold elf lord, rode at the witch king w- r- rode. So the witch king took flight to Cardoom in the north. At a gallop, he never went slow. Eonor swore his revenge. Glorfeld bade him to peace and prevented all hasty pursuit, speaking prophetic words as the battle did cease, which in ages to come would bear fruit. Angmar now is destroyed. The witch king from this land he is fled, nor will reign any more. Yet his doom is far off, nor by any man's hand will he die. This is certain and sure. Now the battle has ended. Eonor took his leave, leaving Honor empty, overthrown. But Mordor, by its guile, enters life plan to read, as other subsequent histories have shown. And that is the fall of Arnor and the overthrow of Angmar.
We currently have 18 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support Lotra players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast your choice or EMB gets with us for an episode of Lotra Players News. We did not receive any emails this week, but if you'd like to send one, you can send it to podcast at lotraplayers.com. Any calls, follow us on Twitter. Oh, wait a minute. We did get an email. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I we totally did. forgot about it. We got it. About, we got it earlier in the week. Um, it is from Glambold on Landreval, and it says, "Great podcast." I'm not sure how many people are aware of the excellent "Don't Fear the Reaper" by Blue Oyster Cult, which includes the cowbell on YouTube. Saturday Night Live decided that they did not have enough cowbell and did one of the best sketches ever, "More Cowbell," which you can watch on YouTube. Would like to say thanks to the developers for bringing more cowbell into the game. Have any bands performed this song, including the more cowbell? And I'm pretty sure that there's at least one version in Lotro that I've heard um, where they use the more cowbell. But I can't remember what band it was. All right. And if you would like to send us an email, you can send a podcast at lotoplayers.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally. Lotoplayers at Lotoplayers. Aaron Dis at Aaron Dis. Piney Fit, Piney Fetal, Sans Winda, S. Sans Winda, at Terry Adwin, at Terry Adwin. The Players Alliance has two shows each week on Mondays at 7 p.m. Louis Caesar time. We have DDO Players News. And on Saturdays at 8 30 p.m. Louis Caesar time, we have Lotro Players News. You can join us for our shows at lotoplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight, and this is Polyphonic Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>